right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am hosting one of Ottawa's greatest, Leslie Jamieson with Gifford Car Insurance. And we're talking specifically today about the Ottawa Cancer Foundation fight for the cure. It is a mouthful. So Leslie, when let's actually just start off with a little bit more about your background. You're working with Gifford Insurance. How long you've been there? What's it all about? So I've been with Gifford for coming up on two years in September. Mm -hmm. uh, Gifford is one of the last, I'd say, family-ran businesses that are independent. They are full service now. We just introduced a health and benefit side oh, wow. to our company, which is really, I mean, it, it's a really good entity to add to any business. And it seems to be where all the brokerages are actually heading. So they're all mm -hmm. going to be doing more like life and investments and stuff. My role with Gifford Carr is a commercial account executive. So I specialize in the health and wellness side is where I like to, to sit. But I seem to be trickling over into the commercial realty side and uh, franchises is where I've ended up. Mm -hmm. So which is really fun. And I'm sure at one point, maybe not today, but we're definitely going to bring you back on the show and talk a little bit more about commercial insurance and what that entails and all of that, yeah. specifically because... That's what I do with real estate and mostly commercial real estate. Uh, but with that being said, thank you so much for the introduction. Let's talk a little bit more about your involvement with the Ottawa Cancer. Sure. So Fight for the Cure is a white-collar boxing match. They have 12 fighters, six on each team. Uh, I'll be on the blue team. And my opponent, Julie, is a commercial banker with CIBC. So our goal where the boxing match is to raise money that goes back into the Ottawa Cancer Foundation. So the Ottawa Cancer Foundation uh, is a wraparound service that will provide services free of charge for families or people that are going through cancer, either treatments or pre-diagnosis, or maybe they've lost someone. They offer a very wide variety of services for free. Which I don't know if you've ever have you had anybody affected by cancer? In yeah, your family. Yeah, uh, it's actually it's fifty fifty. We uh, we're a family of six: my parents, myself, and my brothers. And uh, three of us actually were using the Ottawa Cancer Foundation for one form or another. The biggest thing that I found was just the fact that they uh, like it's like a listening ear. You know, they're available for pointing you in the right direction, if, yeah. if I may. The, so when we first found out, like uh, share a story with you here, we first found out that my brother had cancer. Uh, it was a shock for the whole family. It wasn't just a shock just for the person that got the cancer. I mean, that in itself is a, is a massive undertaking, but also as a family, the support that goes with that. Because you can't, like, here's the thing. Like, it, it's like, you know, like when you get on an airplane and they always say, like, get your mask on first. Yeah. We're already affected as a family, like knowing that, hey, one of our brothers is going through this. Mm -hmm. And we know that he's going to be needing a lot of support and all of that stuff. And how are we able to give him that support if we don't know how? So that's where I found that the Ottawa Castle Foundation was a fantastic resource for us is just to kind of give us that sort of where to go, learn a little bit more about the type of cancer that he had and, and like that, the, you know, where to go for support, where to go for... Uh, you know, if you wanted to, uh, for example, like medication, all of that stuff was just overwhelming. And they made it seem like it's, don't worry about it. Well, we got you covered. It's okay. Take it one step at a time. Take it one day at a time. And then also providing you with the resources behind the scenes, like the people that you want to talk to, for example, when it comes to healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't know that, you know, some of this is covered by OHIP. Some of it is covered by, not all of it, but some of it is covered by, you know, the insurance companies that he had and, so just kind of being able to follow on on all of that, that's kind of my experience with it. But I'm not really sure what that what got you turned yeah. on to it. The so I'm going to be honest. So my sales director is one of the coaches for Fight for the Cure, and it just so happened that we were chatting about it in the office and kind of teasing about it a little bit. And then I said to him, like, how do you try out for this? 
because I always just assumed that they already had the people picked out. Mm -hmm. They're probably hand selected. It's probably not a show up kind of deal because this is a really big event in Ottawa. Probably one of the biggest events, I'd say, uh, that they host. And so I was chatting with him about it and he said, you just show up. There's three days to try out, come out and you just... Scott Whitaker, who is one of the co-founders, his brother, Matt Whitaker, the founder of Life for the Cure. Uh, I believe he's kind of stepped back a little bit. I I work mostly with Scott. And he said, Scott will show you what he wants you to do. And a lot of it is just basic footwork, hands, and movement. And he'll see what you've got. And then the biggest component is actually finding somebody that you can fight. So somebody that's in your age, your weight, your experience, et cetera. And that, I think, is probably the most challenging part of Fight for the Cure. But anyway, I showed up. I I hemmed and hawed a little bit. I showed up the last tryout. No women there. It was all men. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, so that was in February, I think we tried out. And then I went, I went and he goes, okay, well, we'll call everybody at the end of March to let them know if they've got in. So March goes by, a little bit of April is gone. I'm like, oh, I just, so I didn't. All nervous. I'm like, oh, I didn't. I didn't make it. I'm like, am I relieved or am I sad? Like, I don't, I don't know what the emotion is. And then uh, I'm just in my car, whatever, on my way to uh, an event for Gifford Car, and he gives me a call. And I actually said to Scott on the phone when he was like, you're, you're in, you're gonna fight for fight for the cure 2024. And I said, no, no, no. I actually changed my mind. I think that, uh, I think I just wanted to do it for the experience. And he's like, too bad. You're fighting. It's all set up. He told me the opponent that I'm fighting. Uh, He actually made it very hard to say no. And very easy to get excited about, which Mm -hmm. I loved. So now, like moving forward, it was very intimidating to go to the classes. Uh, I am one female on a team full of men. And all of my male teammates are wonderful. I would tell you that we start sparring a couple months ago. I think in May we started to actually spar where you actually get to hit each other. And the way that they have control when they're fighting with me in the ring is outstanding. Because I see them fight each other and they're not hitting me that hard. I'm hitting them that hard. Mm-hmm. As hard as I'm really just can, going for the point instead of going for the. They're really just yeah, like they're really watching their technique, and and I find it very encouraging just as a woman to be able to be a part of it because sometimes I think it would be easy for you to feel excluded, right? Yeah, and to feel like maybe you don't belong there, but I feel very much like I belong. No on intimidation this team. or anything like that. My biggest turning point for fight for the cure when everything kind of clicked for me because it is really fun to say. I'm going to do this fight. I'm going to get this free training for seven months and ride on that. But the real turning point for me was when we went to the Cancer Foundation. And you got to meet the organization that runs it and to hear the stories and like the statistics of people that are diagnosed with cancer on a daily basis is staggering. Mm -hmm. And then by chance, we went down to the basement to take our photos for that for our um donation pages and just so happens that two of these senseis are walking out from a karate class that they just taught for kids and one of the interesting points that the sensei was telling us is that they they call them jabs i think for their needles that they take for treatment and one of the interesting points that she was telling us is that the reason that they do this for free for these kids is because they have to teach them to breathe through pain. So when they're getting these huge needles for days and months, they just breathe through the pain. And I don't know if you've ever had a needle before. If you hold your breath, it hurts more, doesn't it? Yeah. So my mom had taught me from a very early age that when that needle goes in, you breathe out. It's the same thing when we're working out, isn't it? Right? Yeah. So when we lift heavy, when we go to push that weight, we got to breathe out and we breathe in when we're pulling it back. But for me, that was the moment I said to myself, like, this is real. This is going to really change some families' lives that maybe they don't have any family here at all. And the Ottawa Cancer Foundation becomes their family. 
that's that's kind of the the thing that I felt throughout the the whole experience, right? Like from start to end, is that they're always checking up on you. They're always there for you. Like you you've got this like kind of concierge service, if you will, in a way. Um, and they care. It's it's not like they're doing it because they're the job. There's no money for it. Like it's not really. At the end of the day, a lot of them are volunteers. Yeah. There's some that are working and it's their job, but yeah. a lot that are volunteers. They've either had family that's been through it. Uh, or they lost somebody to cancer or what have you, and then they're just doing this out of the goodness of their heart yeah. to help other humans. Yeah. And it, it just feels like, it literally feels like your wraparound family that you built through this. Yeah, that have been through it before. There's something comforting I find when you go through something that is life-altering and you have somebody that's with you that's already walked through it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Maybe they're just riding the wave with you. I believe the Cancer Foundation, they know what they're doing. But I'm just saying that just to have somebody there that you can say to them, this is my emotion and they can hear you and see you. I believe that that is probably like an old proverb, uh, Arabic proverb about death with people or death with others is like mercy. Yeah. You know, like dying alone is... Nobody wants to die alone. No. But dying with somebody around you is mercy. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. Like it's just, and it's it's a little bit ominous to say, but like just the way it is, it's like at the end of the day, look, you want somebody to be there to hold your hand throughout the process, and if they've been through it, it makes it a lot simpler to tell you what to expect. Yeah. It's a lot simpler to know that okay, this is coming. Just brace for it, or this is coming, and you breathe through it, or this is coming, and like you maybe just wanna. Watch out for this or watch out for that. Yeah, I think it's human nature, right, to hold your breath when something bad is going to happen. Mm-hmm. But when you breathe, you're thinking. And if you're not breathing, then you're not thinking and your brain's not working. And and I just, I just find the idea of, like, the fact that they created this Fight for the Cure boxing match and the fact that breathing through pain is one of the biggest survival techniques that you can learn. Yeah. Other than laughter, obviously, I would love to do something with comedy, to be perfectly honest with you. But to be able to be one of the fighters for Fight for the Cure this year, I just, it's uh, it's such a privilege. My schedule is so tight as it is, but it feels like such a privilege to be able to have such this crazy schedule that you have to balance everything around. I look forward every week to going to see um, my teammates on Mondays and Wednesdays and figuring out what new we're going to learn. And now we're into the really exciting part of our foundation fundraising, right? So now you get to do all kinds of fun events to raise money for people while giving back to the community, right? So that part is exciting as well. And we're hoping to give you a few sort of little snippets out of this that you can use for raising a little bit more money for the event. What, um, like, going back to the uh, Ottawa Cancer Foundation, like, what sort of history have they had as far as raising funds and things like that that you know of? Last year, they raised a million dollars from, strictly from Fight from the Cure. Oh, wow. A million dollars was raised last year. And I believe that is our goal again this year. Obviously, you'd like to exceed it, but, I mean, a million dollars... Yeah, and hopefully we can say something like in your face cancer. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? It would be really nice to uh to be a part of that for sure. Now, as far as the so let's talk a little bit more about the selection process sure. that you went through. How many people do you think or when when you were trying out, how many people were trying out with you? As well? Jeez, there must have been thirty or forty people that were there. Mm-hmm. I believe that the first round was probably more than that. So let's say maybe 100 people tried out. Let's say that for a safe number. But it was intimidating for sure uh, to go and not know what you're what to expect. And there were some people there, and I believe that they maybe watched like too many Rocky movies. <laughs> before they went you got the and it was like theme song in their head yeah it was like <laughs> super intense and then you had other people that were just you could just tell that they were just a ball of nerves yeah. before they went right I just feel like an absolute goon like just tell me what you want me to do 
tell me when there's no like tell me what I'm supposed to do what am I allowed to do what am I not allowed to do those are the parameters I'm sticking with yeah if I'm not allowed to do an uppercut I'm not going to do an uppercut if you say yes I'm going to look for my opportunity to throw that so oh, it's I think it's like a really great opportunity like for someone that I, I mean I've, I've been involved with the professional fighting like way back in my day for someone that's like that it, it might be a great opportunity to get into it like just again to be able to raise some of the funds up and stuff like that but i think and maybe this is just my opinion on this they they do look for somebody that's a little bit more all-inclusive that can bring a little bit more of the community uh with it as well too just so like they're they're able to raise more funds is that, is that well what, what the requirements are no history for boxing so you have to have no experience because yeah. scott's going to train you from scratch which is a lot of fun uh it's, it's a lot of fun to also like tease scott about certain things and he takes it very seriously which he should mm -hmm. but sometimes it's nice to like see that opportunity and just seize it and then make him laugh is like the ultimate nice it's the ultimate feeling they do want people that what they do for the matchups is they try to find people that are like rival occup like occupations so this year we have a firefighter, we have a police officer, which is really cool dynamic. We have two people that are with different banks that are in the same positions. Real estate is a big thing as well. We have a accountant and I believe an operations manager that are fighting as well. It's more about what's going to drive you to raise money for the Ottawa Cancer Foundation. What's going to drive you? If you have a bigger network, obviously it's going to be easier for you to raise money and to help. And that's the goal. But you know what? It's not always about quantity. Sometimes it's about quality. So you could have a very small, tight-knit like group of friends and colleagues and a very good reputation. And those people could donate quite a bit of money to you versus going to an abundance amount of people and asking for money. Sometimes it's not about qual like quantity. Sometimes it's about quality. And those people that are close to you are probably going to support you the most, right? Yeah, yeah. And especially for a great cause like this, that's not necessarily a cause that's selective. At the end of the day, it's just um, cancer knows no bounds. They, it doesn't. There's no, you know, it, it doesn't really... It does not care. ...segregate, it doesn't really care. It's Everybody is just sort of free for it kind of thing. But yeah, and it, it's one of those uh, things that I, like, I've, I've been watching over the years like what, what, you gonna try it maybe am i here you're I'm, gonna try it I, I i'm yeah I'm, I'm i'm thinking maybe next year yeah i think that that would be phenomenal yeah i don't know i could i could raise some money for sure i'd, I'd take a few hits for cancer absolutely yeah give them give the hits for cancer or give them too that's what you want to do you don't want to be taking them you want to give them I'm, I'm a bit scrappy i can i can do both that's nice. <laughs> That's what I want. I can't so, wait to buy tickets for that. What do, you, what do you want to say to your opponent? It's a great question. I don't know what I want to say to her. Get in your head. Circle back on that one. Yeah. Okay. Let's circle back on that one. I do love a good trash talking. I do. But I don't know her well enough to say, to say something that I might not regret. <laughs> oh, okay. You, think you know? So? You think you're going to regret it? Maybe. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's all for for I don't know fun and games and for the cure. She's uh, she looks she looks ambitious, intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little nervous. I took out some critical illness coverage. Just oh yeah, to be, just, just to be safe, case. just in case. Yeah. No, you know what? I hope I'm really honored to share the ring with Julie. Uh, she's a lovely personality. She's always laughing and always smiling. She won't be after our fight, but. Hopefully, we're still both smiling. Is that your version of trash talking? Is that too nice? <laughs> oh, you, you might regret it. Julie, Julie's listening to this. She's going to be listening to this for She's sure. She's going to do so good. I'm really, I'm really excited to walk into the ring with her um, and to share that moment with her on this. Um, it's back the the she'd mentioned in her speech that we did for our lodge party that she went to the fights last year. So I've actually never been to the fights. I haven't even actually watched a fight yet. The reason for that is because I feel like I'll psych myself out. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, I just, I just want to go and do what Scott's trained me to do. 
And are you like the type of person that just jumps in the water before I'm just gonna, testing it out, kind of thing? Well, yes. No, like I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm. If we're at Nordique, I'm not checking to see how cold the water is. I'm jumping. You're just in. gonna jump in. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But if it's something, this one took a little bit more thought process in terms of like the commitment that it takes. So there's yeah. a lot of commitment that's involved with it from selling the tables. So I took the most tables, I think, out of all of our fighters. I have almost all of them sold, which is phenomenal. And then we still have to raise money on top of that. Mm -hmm. So that what's what's the goal for every fighter as far as funds? They set it for $50,000 this year. Wow. Yeah. Joey, one of the fighters on the red team, is thriving. He's just blown everyone out of the water. He's, Amazing. Yeah, he's, he's leading us. He's Go left Joey. us. Yeah, he's left us all in the dust. I'm happy. I'm not fighting him. Yeah. That's nuts. I might have to put a second mortgage on my house just to like get the <laughs> numbers up. Catch up to Joey. <laughs> just to catch up to Joey. That's yeah. Fifty thousand dollars per fighter. That's yeah, it's a pretty significant uh, commitment for sure. Yeah. I really appreciate this, Leslie. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much you. for coming. And uh for folks that are watching, really appreciate that you guys are watching. Always hit us up with the comments. Let us know if you have any sort of idea about a business in the city that we, we, you want to interview. And also, if there's any sort of foundation that's close and near to your heart, let us know as well, too, in the comments. For more episodes like this, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can get a little bit more notification every time something like this comes. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button. Mm -hmm. And Leslie, thank you so much again. Thank really appreciate it for coming. Oh, I'm really excited. Can't wait. Julie, watch out. Yeah, watch out.